Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Hornbill Podcast, uh, featuring Hornbill and starring Hornbill. Um, but more importantly, our guest that we have today, and it is the co-founders of Punkaganda, Lexi and Lou. How are you guys? We're so good. How are you, Bestie? Bestie. So... <laughs> The, the, oh god so we kind of had a conversation about this last week but between bestie and bay and all these things <laughs> that were ironic are now no longer ironic and no you got me saying that, yeah like a part of my vocab now i accidentally called bob bay <laughs> and i was so embarrassed <laughs> like, <laughs> i was like hello oh no <laughs> Hey, I thought it was fine. I was like, well, we're closer than I thought we were. All right, let's go. Um, no, that's it's so funny, though, because I, I call the dogs Bay and Bestie and shit like that. And like, I try not to do it around my wife, because if she hears me, I think she'll kick my ass. But um, <laughs> it's just so funny. Um, but yes, uh, the co-founders of Punkaganda. Uh, if for those of you who do not know, Punkaganda is an online magazine, uh, pretty much music based, um, doing incredible things for not only DIY music, but uh, LGBTQ plus, uh, BIPOC and women as a whole um, in the music community. So first off, I have to commend the hell out of you guys for doing such um important work uh let alone uh doing important things for bands and music as a whole so um way to fucking go thank you (laughs) (laughs) um we're so awkward (laughs) for real yeah it's totally cool so uh tell me a little bit about punk again Uh, treat me like i'm a six-year-old kid who has no idea what the hell's going on oh god (laughs) Lou, you take this one. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. So if you're a six-year-old kid, I'd be like, we type things up about really cool bands, and we put it on the internet. <laughs> and people like it. Okay, treat yeah. me like I'm eight. Oh. <laughs> What's the difference? No, I'm just I kidding. think the same thing. So, I'd be like... <laughs> so... How did this start? One, how do you guys know each other? And what was, how did it come about that it was like, we should start this online collaborative music thing? So, Lou and I have known each other for a good, I want to say two years now, two or three years. We Mm -hmm. met, um, well, we met through his girlfriend and um, one of our friends. We were in... (laughs) So before we like started being involved with the DIY scene and stuff, we were a part of like Stan Twitter and still kind of are, but um, we met in the Youngblood fandom, but I don't want to talk about that. So (laughs) I only know about Youngblood because of you. um, And I, to this day, have not listened to that music because I've heard so many things I don't want to have my own. I, I don't want to uh, isolate anyone by saying anything because I just don't know. I don't have an opinion, yeah. but mm-hmm. I've heard some things and we'll skip over that. So, um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, so you guys met. When did you start talking about punk again? Well, when did you start talking about potentially doing something, and then how did it turn into punk again? I think we started talking about. Um, well, I have a private account other than like my main account where I tweet everything and about crying and stuff. <laughs> um, but I was like tweeting on there and I was like, damn, I really want to start like my own publication because at the time, um, Lou and I worked for a like a smaller publication called Mosh Pit. And Lou and I, Lou would always like comment, like, let's do it. Like, like, let's just say fuck it and just go ahead and start this but it never went past that (laughs) okay like for a good year we were just like let's do it and then not talking about it and then finally we said fuck it and we're like let's just start this and we started coming up with like names and we and they were pretty good names too but the ats like for twitter and instagram were always taken yeah and um you know 
we wanted to include something that was like that had the word punk in it because that's the music genre Lou and I both listen to. And Lou sent me a text message and was like, what about something like pro punk propaganda? And then I was like, how about we mash that and create punkaganda? And that's kind of how that was born. And love it. Yeah. Uh, so it, what, obviously it's punk and propaganda, but how often do you get punk agenda? Too many, too much, too much, oh, too much, too much. In in our email, we'll get people being like, "Hey, we want to feature this for Punk Agenda," and like, no, no hate to them. Uh, some of the things that we get are like amazing, and we'll look over the name, like the incorrect spelling of the name, and we'll feature it. But it's a lot of our emails are Punk Agenda. I had a friend like come up to me and be like, "So how's Punk Agenda going?" And I'm like. Hello? I'm not stupid. I know how to spell. <laughs> like, we know how to spell. Yeah. Come on. Uh, so, I think you have that working against you, and then you also have the fact that people only assume that uh, punkaganda is punk, and only punk. Yeah. So, I'm like, and I'm talking like street punk, like old misfits and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, how often do you get that? Because I know that I personally did that to you guys. <laughs> we actually don't get that often, honestly. Okay. Um, cause I think we made a post about it. It was like, by the way, like, I think anytime we hit, like, a milestone of followers, we're like, hey, we don't do just punk. So then people just know. Um, yeah, we don't get it that often. But sometimes I just want to tweet, like, it's not just punk. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like we're fans of all genres of music. Like yeah. sometimes I find myself listening to indie music and I'm like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, so you guys just had a, a big trip. Well, I would say Lexi had a big trip. Lou, yeah. that's, that's not <laughs> too far for you, right? You're a Baltimore no, guy. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'll, I have a place where I, I'm from. And my like family lives there, so I was just crashing there um, when Lexi came. So it's like an hour out from Baltimore. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Lexi, you flew from California to BWI, Baltimore. Yeah. And uh, I'm so, insane. <laughs> that's not insane at all. That's awesome. First <laughs> off, especially because what you went to do was just see a handful of shows, right? Yeah. Yeah, I so, saw a span of like three people in 24 hours. It was so crazy. First show was Pink Shift, correct? Uh, first show was again in May. Oh, okay, shit. So again in May, uh, I'll work with that. So Liam and again in May, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, how handsome is Liam in person? <laughs> <laughs> so I, handsome. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so handsome dude chef's kiss but um <laughs> but yeah no liam's really cool i i love liam a lot he's like one of the nicest people i've ever met he's really definitely cool. very genuine um yeah since so we had somewhat spoken before he did this podcast and uh that started a whole plethora of other conversations and musical ideas and other things like that and yeah um, I am thrilled to have gotten to know him um, I haven't gotten to meet the rest of the band just yet but I would imagine they're all wonderful people just like him yeah um, I feel like the two that I'm closest to is Sean and Liam so Sean's their bassist right okay. um, I met I met Dan and Noah there but <laughs> I feel like they're a little bit shy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we, we didn't get to really like talk with them, but I hope to like get to know um, Noah and Dan like more in the future, but definitely they're all, they're all really great guys and you know, they're going to go at least places like, yeah, I hope so. I at that. least they're yeah. the best. Uh, so who played that show with them? Uh <laughs> Lou, you shot the openers or the headliner, right? I think, yeah. I know Overmorrow was there. Um, 
That's all I want to remember. There, there was, a, <laughs> there was another band there called Send oh, Request. Was that was too. Yeah. Who else? Shane Girl Law. Shane Girl Law. And then Send Request. Yeah. Send Request. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know those uh, bands either, but I they will. They were pretty sick. Overmar was it. so good. Yeah, it's so cool Overmar to see cool. like. Uh, Man, I don't want to assume like pronouns and gender, but like, like feminine fronted bands and stuff. It's so cool to see that because like growing yeah. up, I grew up listening to like Blink One Eighty Two and Hawthorne Heights and Silverstein, and you see a lot of like white cis men like fronting bands, and sometimes it like gets a little old. <laughs> Guilty, so it, it, I know. So it, yeah, so it's yeah. cool to see like you know, people who look like me or whatever, like killing it in the scene. See, that's, I, I hope this doesn't sound disingenuous, but that's why Hornbill it, it kind of exists is obviously it's, it's cathartic for me. It's, it's, it's an outlet for me to get what's going on in my head out. But the opportunity that we have to, one showcase um, marginalized folks in this music community, especially heavier music, um, and to hopefully, when we start rounding out a band, give uh, these marginalized folks more of a platform well, to, to play and be a part of that, because that has been so fucking sick to see in the last uh, year, uh, since COVID, really, since I, I have been a part of Hornbill and started that whole thing and just seeing how uh, how important it is and how special it is for people who haven't really been showcased in this type of music for generations to be the forefront now or at least becoming the forefront and it's just it's super sick and I hope that um, we're doing our job as white cis men um, to make that more of an opportunity yeah mm -hmm. like the punk scene definitely um i mean you don't really hear a lot about like you know bipoc individuals um in the punk scene at least you know back in the day and stuff but if you really like look into it it was kind of created by all all these you know marginalized groups and stuff like that and it's really cool to see at least now like them being like fronted in the media like pink shift pink shift is like incredible incredible and they are like i don't know on the tour on sad summer fest like that's yeah so that's cool. nuts too that congrats to them because yeah. that what just got announced yesterday or the day before and that's so insane um yeah so huge props to them that needs to happen more uh and it will happen more as time goes on because how can it not? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so that was that uh, again in May show. Then you was it uh, the the pop up turnstile show next? Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> dude, so cool. I love turnstile. They're like one of my favorite bands right now. Um, so I didn't get tickets to their show out or their shows out on the West Coast. They sold out super fast. So when they that. announced that they were having a free show in Baltimore, I was like, sick, I'm going to be out there that day. Like, even if I get to see them for only 10 minutes, it was, it was yeah. still so fun. That's an awesome coincidence. Yeah. Like, super cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so Ryan is a huge fan of that. Uh, I don't even know if it you would consider it an EP. It's just like a media release that they put out recently and it's obviously it's music but they also did the whole video thing with it and yeah. um super cool super good and yeah I, I hope that show was a blast it definitely was like i i've seen turnstile one time before but i was they were on tour with like the story so far okay. um and at the time i didn't really listen to them so i was there for the story so far and I just remember that pit being crazy. But now that I actually like listen to them right away, right when they walked on the pit opened and like, I was, I had my camera cause I wanted to take pictures. <laughs> I was getting elbowed in the stomach. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's take some pictures and like, let's get out of here. Cause I don't know if I can handle this right now. 
We had to like drive to go see Pink Shift after. It was a, it was like a lot. Around. Someone it like day. broke their leg when we were there. Like what? ten yeah. minutes. <laughs> it was like yeah. ten minutes. We broke their leg. We're like okay, <laughs> dude. Like on the way to see Pink Shift, we were looking up like tweets from the show, and someone was tweeting about like I hope the lady that had to go see the medic uh, was okay. And I guess one of the security guards, like they had like they were propping up some lady's like leg or whatever and uh, like taking care of them like medically and while also having like a cigar in the other hand. <laughs> 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 I was like, same, same. I love Ooh. Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Baltimore wild. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that was that show. And then uh, the last one was Pink Shift, correct? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I have yet to see them play. I hope to soon. Um, so I imagine that that was sick. Who else did they play with? It was Jariah and... Oh, Curtis that's Mother. right. Jariah played. How was he? He was insane. He's so good. His Dude. live show is so good. Like, he's, I have to see him again. Yeah, he's so good. I hope he makes it over to the West Coast one day. Um, or I'll just fly out there to go see them. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, my friend Luke and I, we looked at each other and like we started pushing each other and it started a pit. It was so fun. <laughs> that, was, it. that was the best thing. Love it. Uh, so, I mean, three shows in two days, three days? Yeah. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you took uh, photography for all of them, correct? Just again in May. And Lou did, Lou did Pink Shift. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Pink Shift, a little bit of Drya, and then Courage Mother, and Oprah Mar from the Game of May gig. Okay. So sick. Um, so, uh, in regards to your, uh, what do you call them? The actual releases that you have for the galleries. Um, you give yourself a lot of shit. I understand that we're, o- we're our own worst critics, but you guys are fucking phenomenal <laughs> photographers. I don't and know. <laughs> you don't give yourselves enough credit. So do me a favor and pat yourselves on the back right fucking now. <laughs> Thank you. Because you deserve it. And you, you need to give yourselves more credit. Um, you guys are, I mean, Lexi, you're 20, I think. Lou. Yeah. yeah. Uh, low 20s. 22. 22. Yeah. You guys are so young and so fucking passionate already like you're only going to get exponentially better and you're starting from a great artistical spot so don't let the little voice in your head tell you otherwise because the big idiot caveman voice is telling you that it's good okay (laughs) oh i appreciate that i do too that i'm gonna cry right now stop bro that was so nice (laughs) (laughs) um Yes, yeah, so keep taking pictures. They're only going to get better. Again, they're already great, so it's going to be phenomenal. Um, one thing I do want to know is kind of each of your inspirations uh, musically. Uh, so, I, Lexi, I know you said you grew up listening to Blink, Hawthorne Heights, and um, I don't remember who it was. Silverstein, which is... All the old bands. <laughs> see, that, that early 2000s, late... 90s like pop punk and uh emo screamo startup like that's that's where my heart is so to hear i sound like a fucking old ass man (laughs) um to hear 20 year olds talking about that's what they grew up with and that's what they liked like that brings me so much happiness so uh, i grew up with that just because like my sisters they're like 15 years older than me they're in the late 30s now and that's the kind of music they listen to. So if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would be like really deep into like pop punk and stuff like that right now. Okay. Developing my own taste. Lou, how about you? Mine's like a mix of like nineties alt and grunge and then like nineties, early two thousands hip hop. Which is okay. so weird. No, it's not um, weird. And then I hit like a small layer of punk. Um, with like seventies punk, like with Joan Jett and stuff, and the Runaways. Okay, I love yeah. the Runaways. <laughs> I love Joan Jett. Um, <laughs> Joan Jett. 
<laughs> don't do it. Um, like stuff like Outcast, and then like I switched like Smashing Pumpkins and like Nirvana and stuff. So. So oh, when you say cool. '90s alt and grunge and stuff like that, were you were you into uh, early Offspring? Um, oh, Rage yeah, Against, for sure. Rage Against the Machine. Yep. Okay. See, that's that's like what I grew up with. So. Um, Evil Empire and Battle of Los Angeles from Rage and then uh, Smash, Ignition and uh, Ixnay on the Ombre from The Offspring. Like those are, if I'm feeling like I want to be a kid again, like I listen to that shit and just vibe the hell out. Um, What are you guys listening to a lot currently? Again in May. (laughs) Again in May. (laughs) May I'm like pink shit. I have pink shift on the brain. Like yes. know, after that show, like all I can think about is pink shift. I it's miss like, them. This sucks. I so much. <laughs> Damn, I hate living here. Lou, move over. I'm moving in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's other than that, I've been listening to a lot of Courage Mother. Um, yeah. What else? Um, oh shit! It's movements um, and. Boston Manor for me. You and that fish oh, got me nice. fucking cracking up the other week. <laughs> it's my ear. I love it. I love I, that they replied to it too. They they were like, "Oh, I saw the fish." Hell yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. just geeking out. Too funny. I was oh, at that. <laughs> I love that so much. Um. So I know you guys kind of you, you source photography uh, outside of what you guys do alone, um, and you do you do the same with your writing, or is the the journalism sector of all of that just you guys? Um, no, so we have different like we have a whole team of writers and photographers and stuff, and you sh- we get so many PR emails. It's crazy. Sometimes it's I overwhelming to keep up with, and I we're. Like, it. Okay, when we first started this, we didn't think that we were going to get that much. And now it's grown into this whole big thing. And it's so cool to see. But, okay, people think that we don't go through our emails, all of them. But we really do. I sit there and I listen to every single email that I get. And it's mostly Mm -hmm. like I'll send them to my artist or to my writers before I reply um, to the emails and see if they want to pick up anything that they like. And if they do, they'll go ahead and write about it. Or if there's like an album from their favorite band, they want to write about it. They'll ask me to do it. And usually I say, yeah, just depending on who it is. But yeah. Yeah, that's one. That's great. Um, I can understand not thinking that much is going to come of what you're starting and then being completely fucking overwhelmed um, because God, everybody's so fucking talented. Um, one with their photography. I mean, some of the the photographers you have doing those galleries are insane. Uh, yeah, and they then, are really insane. They they, so they <laughs> intimidate me a lot. Yeah, they're so good. Well, we got like their like applications. We're like these. They're really good. Why are they? Uh, I'm like they can own Punkaganda now. It's okay. <laughs> they're like they're so good. Uh, that and the the journalism too. Um, I. I don't fancy myself a writer, but I have a decent vocabulary and I can write things, but I've always kind of thought about doing reviews and shit like that, but reading these uh, folks, like, reviews and articles and stuff, I'm like, fuck, man. Nobody wants to read my caveman brain-ass shit. Like, (laughs) people are so talented and I love it. And you guys are, you're just... Shout out to Eric. Eric, oh my God, he's like our best writer. Oh, and Juno. Juno and Amara. Oh, my gosh. God. Yeah, you're, you're I reading, like, Go Eric's ahead. first thing, and I was like, what are these words? I was like, work. <laughs> my brain was <laughs> not working. <laughs> See, that's what I find myself doing pretty often. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> um, but, no, I totally get it. Uh, you're, you're honing in. Hey, God. I'm so excited for you guys, not only because of how far that you, you, you've you come or in the last year. Give me a fucking break. You started this last July, right? Or June. Yeah, mm-hmm. July. And 
yeah, the amount of talent that you have and you're, you're honing in everybody's strengths and stuff, like, I don't know. I'm just very excited for you guys, and I hope you don't forget us small little people when you're freaking taking over the world, so. What the? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Hello. Hello. People are, when you guys are, like, running shit in the music industry in, like, 10, 15 years, people are going to find this interview on YouTube and be like, wow, they were so young and cute, and, like, who was that guy they were talking to? <laughs> 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 Some random fucking podcast. No, we're taking all of you guys with us, <laughs> rising to the top. <laughs> shit, yeah, yeah, I'm fine doing whatever you guys need, so you let me know whenever that happens. <laughs> um... But yeah, that, that, that's pretty much Punkaganda. Um, I mean, is there anything that you guys want to say and just as far as the the entity that is Punkaganda? Do you, do you need to shout out anything into the world for it? Oh, we're planning a physical magazine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> and maybe some merch. <laughs> Sorry, there's something yeah, stuck in my throat. throat. <laughs> you should see a doctor. <laughs> As long as it's not COVID, I'm okay with that. <laughs> got a little cough, a little scratch, I'm all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, sick. Yeah, so eyes peeled. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's jump into questions. Um, oh, my God. Got a handful of these today, so thank you for everybody sending them out. Um, some I'm going to save for other days because uh, if you're listening to this, you need to be more consistent and not send me 10 requests on one day and then zero on like two other days. So, um, <laughs> Bob said, I'm going to call people out real quick. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first question, and I have no fucking idea how to answer this, but, uh, what are some tips to become a high school class president? Uh, I was so anti-social in high school. Oh, no. um, See, I was social, but I fucking hated school. So, yeah, that no, was the I, last thing I was trying to do. I hated high school, but man, I don't, I don't know, dude. Just don't. <laughs> just don't do it <laughs> I mean it, <laughs> if you're I suppose if you're dead set on it uh, I, I would imagine it's somewhat political just because I don't know I, I don't know just get good grades and be a decent person and try yeah. what's best for uh, the good of your class I don't know I, I mean to like class president you're speaking for all the students there and i know that some students feel what's the word like less represented than others so well that and potentially like they might not even exist at that point in time exactly so just do your best to try to get to know everyone and you know represent them to the best of your ability and stuff like that yeah I hated high school, so I don't know. Yeah, just remember that there are other people that aren't you in your class. Um, Yeah. You can do that for, like, if you want to be class president for selfish motivations, like, it's not going to work. You got to want to actually help others. So um, if you don't have a desire to do that, I don't think it's going to fly. Yeah. So just don't do it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) help others but don't become class president I just I don't know that's weird Um, so uh, Liam sent this to me um, but I'm going to turn it right back around to him Uh, does it hurt being that handsome so I'm going to say this real quick and I've kind of uh (laughs) <laughs> alluded to it uh, earlier but uh when the the the, the torchlight in the cave is just right i look great um in normal daylight liam is the handsome one um so i'm just gonna uh throw that there so uh yeah how do you guys feel about uh <laughs> being very attractive young people. 
what the no i feel like i look like a, i look like a fucking troll sometimes like literally oh i i woke same. up and i had to go to target before this and i just look like shit <laughs> and i'm like you do not per- you do not perceive me i don't know man <laughs> brains are weird i get it yeah um I, I'm going to cut the self-deprecation. We're all beautiful, and I fucking love you guys, so shut up. Um, Aww. Aww. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, this is a good one, and it might take you a couple of seconds, so I'll start with it. Um, you only have three bands to listen to for the rest of your life. Who are they? So my three are going to be... And I, I, I went with... I put a lot of thought into this, because I'm a dope, but... I went with amount of, uh, like, the size of discography and what I felt would last over time. So I went with Protest the Hero, who I love and have always loved, and they have, like, five or six albums now that are fucking awesome. Um, I went with Mooseblood, who has three albums out four albums out and they're all fucking phenomenal and i also went with frontier to uh itch the heavier side of my uh existential dread only listening to three bands the rest of my life so um (laughs) protest the hero moose blood and frontier yeah it's a tough one lexi hit it oh why me (laughs) um (laughs) shit Dude, I listen to so many bands that are so good. I think I would cry if I just let go one of them. But definitely for me, Movements is like number one for me. I I love them to death. And of course, they're like a hometown band. Um, Phenomenal live, honestly. Um, Them and then Boston Manor. Again, another favorite. They're so good. Two solid choices. Yeah, and just to feed like again my my hardcore my hardcore side, I would say not to lose definitely. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go on a tangent real fast. Um, so the what is it? The the little EP they did before a different shade of blue came out. They had a Warriors cover on that um, slings and arrows. Yeah. Have you ever listened to the Warriors? No. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you homework, and I want you to listen to The Warriors. Oh, I just started my college courses. Please. (laughs) This is the most important college course that you're going to take, is I need you to listen to The Warriors. Um, War is Hell, that album. Uh, It's Knocked Loose before Knocked Loose was Knocked Loose, and that's why they covered that fucking song. But um, to go back to to Baltimore roots here, too, so... uh, a friend, myself, and an ex-girlfriend saw the Warriors play uh, Sonar uh, back in the day in Baltimore, and uh, my girlfriend got her ass kicked by some other girl who went after her in the pit, and she talked shit back to her. <laughs> so we got kicked out of a Warriors show <laughs> because my girlfriend got her ass handed to her. Um <laughs> The Warriors were like the yeah. heaviest fucking band ever. So yes, listen to them. I promise I you're will. gonna like them. Uh, but yeah, those are three good ones. Mm-hmm. Lou, shoot. I'm still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pearl Jam. Okay. Yeah. Lincoln Park. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then I don't know. Probably Smashing Pumpkins. Okay. You're a big Billy Corgan guy? I am a big Billy Corgan guy. <laughs> okay. I'm, like, obsessed with him for no reason. <laughs> like, I don't know why. He's a musical genius. He is. Uh, same with Eddie Vedder, too. Fuck. Um, Correct. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with all six of those choices. Good job. Um, all right. Uh... Two questions kind of in one here. Uh, what are... So I'm not going to answer this because it's not for me, but uh, biggest hopes and biggest fears for Punkaganda? What, what's... what's 
the fears, obviously, I, I could imagine that they're going to be the fears of any normal person. But what are the goals? What are the what are the aspirations? Oh man, we have a whole list of like goals and milestones that we want to hit in, in both of our phones. Like in our notes, we're just like, "Hey, I want to do this." Like, let's write it down. Hopefully, in the future, that we'll be able to achieve it. But you know, we definitely want to be like. We want to be able to pay all of our team because right now it's just volunteer okay. work. And, Exposure. You know, it's, yeah, and it, it sucks not to be paid for your work, you know? Agreed. So hopefully, like, we become big enough to be able to do that and stuff. But yeah. That's a good fucking goal. Yeah, yeah um, I agree with that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, yeah, well, when you get that big and you're able to pay people, you give me a call and uh, we can... <laughs> Uh, we can work together on uh, the logistics side of that type of thing. Um, any other? I don't know. Any? Is there any? Let, let's say that that's a good. That's a good career goal for it. Are, are there any like? I don't know. Off shooting star goals. Uh, random. This is what you want to do with the brand. Any silly things? Crazy things? Uh, I I don't know if like. Or Lou, do you have anything? I feel like I talk too much sometimes. But I do have something in I do have something uh, in mind. If there's oh, anybody dumb. that's talking too much, it's me, so you're fine. It's kind of a dumb one, but also not a dumb one, but I want to hit 5k because we're gonna get the logo tattooed at yes. 5k on, so, on Twitter. One, sick. I like that. Two, the tattoo idea is even cooler. And three, um, congrats on one and a half thousand because that was just yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah, in a fucking year. That's insane. That's nuts. That comes. <laughs> I, I remember when we hit like 300 in the first 24 hours. <laughs> and Lou and I were up. It was like, like one in the morning for me. And I'm like, Lou, we're about to hit like 200 and he's like oh shit like let me let me stay up for a little bit <laughs> and and it's like and then th like we're like okay it looks like it's slowing down and then 3 a.m hits and we hit 300 and that's we were nuts. like damn that's insane i love yeah, that so much yeah that's do you do you have a time frame in mind for 5k or just just a guesstimate like punkaganda is growing so much right now like really really fast it's it's crazy to watch um i would say like within the next year or so i was gonna yeah. say by new year's yeah <laughs> hello <laughs> all right i think with the amount of shit you guys have in the works i would think that new year's would be feasible at minimum I don't know. I guess we'll see. I yeah, don't know. we'll see. Where are you gonna get five? Uh, just five K tattooed? No. Well, so we're logo. getting the logo. Oh, the logo. Sorry, the I didn't hear that part. Like, just the head. Like. That's sick. That's a good one. Yeah. Um. Uh, I have always wanted to do all the bands I've ever been in their logos, um, but. I would have to get Derek's face tattooed on me, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I mean, you saw you saw that picture of him in the ice box earlier. I don't. What's uh, <laughs> that? <laughs> he's so. <laughs> did, so he's working the county fair up that way, and. Uh, He's like in charge of all like the food distribution or something up there. So for whatever reason, he's taking a chill in a <laughs> in a fucking ice box. Like, hey, yo, I bet it's hot out there too. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been too bad. Not as bad as it was uh, a couple weeks ago, but yeah, it's starting to to autumn out. Hopefully. Yeah, um, it's like ninety six degrees today here. I'm, I'm dying. Where are you in California? Uh, um, <laughs> let's just say Los Angeles. Roundabout. Like, that's out, right. Yeah, outskirts of LA. Gotcha. I I lived in Long Beach and Redondo Beach for a little bit, so if you said something, I would be familiar with it, but I don't want to. Oh, okay, then like Whittier. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, it's probably toasty. Yeah. Rainy season hasn't hit just yet. <laughs> it never rains. <laughs> it does. It rains for like a month straight, and that's it. <laughs> right? It rains for like five minutes. Oh my God. So I was flying into Baltimore and it said that it was raining. And I looked around like out the window and I was like, raining my ass. It's it's sunny. <laughs> and I get a I get a FaceTime call from my friend here and she's all look, it's raining. And she shows me a picture of my car and it's just covered in water. And I'm like, uh. what the fuck? <laughs> I figure she'd miss that. Are you, are, I'm assuming, a fan of the rain? I love the rain. I do, too. We had a... Uh, uh, let's uh, section off to, to Weather Channel talk real fast. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> We had a, a, a like a two-day storm last week, and we're very similar to California, Utah, is where we'll get a downpour for like 10 minutes, and then that's it. Um, but we had like two days of rain and it just made me miss the East coast so much. I miss, um, God, I just miss like rainstorms. Yeah. Did they, did you get hit by the hurricane Lou or did that miss you? That missed me. Okay. Miss me. All right. <laughs> oh my God. Like when we were out in Baltimore, um, our two friends, Amara and Luke, they live in like Massachusetts and uh, Connecticut. And, you know, the day that I was flying home, their trains got canceled back home no shit. because because of the hurricane. And so they were stuck in Baltimore for like another night or two. Bro, it's a so, train. Yeah, it's, it's, I was, <laughs> it's on rails. <laughs> I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, all right, but bye, guys. Like, I'm going home. I'm going back yeah. to the West Coast. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, that's enough weather channel uh, discussion. Uh, la- last question. Um, uh, name a conspiracy theory that you 1000% believe is true. While you guys are thinking, I'm just going to spout it off. Yeah. 9-11. That shit was an inside <laughs> job. For sure. No, for sure. I, I think agree. so too. Yeah. There's too much fact surrounding that that was done by us and by no one else. Yeah, I don't know. Things don't add up with 9-11 sometimes, but like... The math isn't mathing. No. <laughs> How does it feel to know. not be mentally affected by 9-11 as, as, as young people? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> I have other mental illnesses, <laughs> so <laughs> so having that not affecting me <laughs> is better. Sorry, that's um, a weird question, but I yeah, we're I, re- <laughs> I, I remember being in seventh grade when that happened, and like it freaking me the fuck out. I remember sitting in front of our television like at night after school and stuff like that, like wondering when we were going to get our asses bombed and killed. Like, I was terrified. Um, I was, like, four months old. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I'm not as old as your sisters, and that makes me happy, but... Yeah. Yeah. Seventh grade, 9-11 was sketchy. And I, shit, I remember we had um, the worst. We had uh, some exchange students, uh, one from Turkey and one from Bulgaria. Um, not even, I mean, they're in the vicinity of Iraq and Afghanistan, but just because they're brown, like, they got tons of shit. And Jesus. yeah, that was so fucked up. And, like, I'm glad that, I, I don't know, I, I like those guys. I was their friend, but, like, they, I hate they always got so much shit for that, and I imagine that that's the case for the majority of anybody foreign in that point in time at that age. So, let al- I mean, today, please, um, let alone just being that, yeah. So, um, okay, conspiracy theories, you guys. Lou? <laughs> Bestie. I don't know if it's, I literally, Bestie. like, thought about this. I don't know if it's actually, like, a conspiracy theory. 
but I thought about it like when people were like going to like the moon or whatever. <laughs> I think that <laughs> I think that we've been on every other planet and destroyed it. And this is our last planet to live on. <laughs> Ayo. <laughs> what? <laughs> we went like from you know, whatever, Pluto, and then just destroyed all of them and kept going. <laughs> This is the Sir. last one. <laughs> so, are you okay? <laughs> I'm. I don't <laughs> doubt your logic here, but I am concerned about it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I. I mean, planets exist. Like we Bruh. we. <laughs> so when you when you say that we destroyed them, are you talking like absolutely like evaporated them or like oh, no, no, no. we, we like, made them uninhabitable? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, well, let's say uh, we we lived on Pluto at one point in time. Like, was it closer to the sun and not like thousands of degrees below zero Celsius? Or did we just have really good uh, jackets back then? I don't know. Because, like, also <laughs> evolution. So maybe we're just used to, like, the colder weather. And then we evolved. Come close to the sun. <laughs> My brain cells are hurting <laughs> right now. So uh, I'm not going to say that, like... <sighs> this is just out of nowhere. Like, I haven't thought about it. But, like... See, it's awesome to think, think about. Sucks. It's super cool to think about because, I mean, I don't know. You kind of make an interesting point. Evolution has occurred over billions of years. It's possible that we have managed to find our way here from other planets. <laughs> um, okay, Lexi. Uh, okay, mine's not as crazy as that, <laughs> but... <laughs> but you know which I think I think the Illuminati is real. <laughs> now I sound psycho. Like Ooh. I think so it's real. I th there's a lot of weird coincidences behind a lot of those beliefs and happenings and I don't know. It it Dude. makes it makes too much sense for it to not be real. And yes. at this point in time, it like 2021, we have fucking cameras everywhere and I can talk to you guys virtually across the fucking country and like it's so beyond a conspiracy now that like how can it not be true? And it there's that other side of it too where it's like it's so much of a joke that the Illuminati is like pumped that nobody fucking thinks it's real yeah but I don't know if you've seen those videos listen sometimes I go on tangents at three in the morning and I freak myself out <laughs> but there's like videos of up close like celebrities and they just like flatline out of nowhere they just stop like showing emotion and stuff and I'm just like yo what are y'all doing I'm like are you okay <laughs> Ayo. so I don't know it's kind of creepy I think they're like lizard people like some people yeah. yes <laughs> so <laughs> stop I was like uh so Turner from Little Geronimo he actually uh, uh, uh so shit he asked something and then we got onto this but he is into reptilians as well and I think yeah, I don't doubt that. People are fucking strange. Um, and There's like videos of their eyes changing. Yeah. How do you, how do you fucking do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Um, I'm going to ask you guys something weird here, and I might sound like a fucking space cadet. Um, but so... The Illuminati and the, this other, there's like reptilian people things, right? And then I'm personally of the belief that if I don't speak with you or we have any type of relationship that I don't believe that you exist. Like, I believe that... <laughs> 
<laughs> Lou just gave me the face that I gave him when he said the planet shit. Um, <laughs> I believe that like there's we're cogs in this machine, right? And we only really know our own self awareness. So how do I know that I'm not the only person that exists? It's all just a figment of this awareness. All right, so next segment. <laughs> Cause, uh, <laughs> now I gotta sit and think about this. I do not agree. <laughs> no, that's it, that's all I got. <laughs> no, but yeah, for sure. I don't not uh, agree, but you sound like a lunatic. That's what you wanted to yeah. say, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a sociopath, like you don't exist. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, we do exist. <laughs> I mean, I know, I get it, but uh, yeah, uh, existential questions, yay! Um, <laughs> I'm having a crisis right now. <laughs> um, all right, uh, that's enough for questions. Everybody, <laughs> thank you for sending those. Those are good ones. Um, I kept a couple for uh, future episodes. Uh, again, uh, I don't have to ask for questions in order for them uh, for you to send them to me. So send them to me, please. Um, all right, segments. This fucking rules. What has killed it for you lately? We'll start with Lou this time. Go for it. Pink shift. <laughs> Pink shift. For sure. I I love them so much. No, but actually, like them, like supporting propaganda, like this whole time. Yeah. And like, like. Both of us growing like at the same time is really cool. Big time. And also the fact that they use my photos. That's crazy. Like that's insane. Like, Damn, too. okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a know. really I so I know you've kind of freaked out about this too, Lexi, but people using your photos as like their their profile pics and uh, band yeah. pics and like I would imagine I don't know that per exact feeling, but I imagine it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it, it's so cool. Like, imagine someone asking you to have your song in a, like in the in a movie. Yeah, like, that's how it feels. Yeah, it, it's so cool. And like, no band has ever done that before with me. And I'm I'm friends with like a lot a lot of uh, local LA bands and stuff. But um, yeah, have never seen that in my life. So it was really cool yeah. to see. Pink shift, yeah. like this is the first time that anyone's ever used my photos. Like, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, damn, y'all like y'all like us? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes I feel like people hate us, but we're like, it's okay. Keep on vibing. <laughs> I love it. Vibing. Uh, yeah, that's a good one, Lexi. How about you? Man, like just pink shift, uh, like same like, pink shift and again in May. <laughs> and, like <laughs> we do, they make me shy. <laughs> Um, but oh, I don't that's... know. Just yeah. Finish up. Just just pink shifting again in May and having bands like that support us since the very beginning. It's so cool to see um, and and watching them grow and get the recognition they deserve too. It's it fucking rules. Like it's so cool to see and stuff. Yeah, love that. What? 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 That face kills me. It kills me. I didn't realize I was doing it right now. <laughs> so there. Oh God. Um. <laughs> there. I have to see if I can find it, and I'll send it to you guys. But there's a there's a meme of a dog, um, and it, it has the backwards hat on, and it has the. The, the whatever face I, it is. I know and what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's the first one I saw of that. And like, I was, holy shit. Like, that's the best fucking thing I've ever seen. And then <laughs> I, I saw you doing it. And I was hoping that it was that, that you were replicating. And, uh, and I only realized that it's just some fucking fuck boys or whatever. Do them. Whatever thing they're doing. <laughs> I love it so much. Every time I see you do that, I die. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't take normal selfies anymore. I just got to go. 
Uh, please tell me that when we eventually meet in person, you'll take a picture with me and doing that phase. Yeah, that's all I need. Like all three of us. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what we can do. Um, God. So, I'm gonna go off on another thing here. So, uh, in April, I flew out um, to help Ryan move out here. Um, but when I was out in Baltimore, we through my buddy's bachelor party and because we're a bunch of grown ass children we went to sky zone um and uh so we had the party room and everything like a bunch of fucking 10 year olds and we got cake and dinner and all this shit for my 32 year old buddy who's about to get married and uh these kids were knocking on the fucking window and they were doing that they were doing whatever that was and we had no idea what it was. And we were like, what the fuck are these kids doing? Like, are you insinuating that we're using drugs? Or um, most of... <laughs> mo- <laughs> most of these guys are all, like, big, almost bodybuilder types, buff motherfuckers. And we weren't sure if that was, like... Uh, do they need steroids? Like, um... <laughs> I had no fucking clue what it was until uh, we asked them and they were like, yeah, it's a TikTok thing. I was like, oh, OK. And then uh, the one kid's mom came up to us and was just like, yeah, sorry, my kid's an idiot. Like, he just loves TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight up. That's word for word. <laughs> hey, hey, yo. <laughs> like, all right. Um, uh. Yeah. So uh, I love that face and that gesture because that's just ridiculous but um okay so uh let's jump into this fucking sucks uh what has sucked for you lately start with lexi on this one um college college does suck (laughs) and work work. um right now well i work for live nation and um The area I work with is predominantly, like, country listeners. So they have a lot of country shows there. And I see that in Whittier. uh, Some of them are a little (laughs) racist. (laughs) Um, One of my friends was working a country show while I was in Baltimore. And she said that she got spit on buy some dude so if i lose my job (laughs) my first country show look away (laughs) because i'm not going to tolerate anyone spitting on me one good for you fuck that um yeah two also if you're white and you see that happen you better fucking stand up for that shit that is not okay yeah um and I, I hate to say it, but I'm not surprised that that is happening at a country show. Yeah, I'm, I'm not either. I was like, oh, thank God I didn't work that day because I probably would have lost my job. Yeah, I, it, yeah, fuck that. It, yeah. If, yeah, I'm not even going to jump into it. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, country does suck. Uh, and I'll make sure that Derek knows that country does suck because he uh, keeps trying to hint at more country stuff for me, and I am not doing it, buddy. When not when we it. did the interview with him, he told us that he wants to do more country stuff, and I was like, nope. If I had more thumbs, I would give him more thumbs down. <laughs> no hate to people who love country, but like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> nah, some hate to people who love country. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so my this fucking sucks is spam. And not the fucking whatever fake food, but spam oh. messages, <laughs> spam calls. Um, I The amount of spam message requests on Instagram and Twitter saying like, oh yeah, like... 69 come watch me uh fuck this eggplant emoji and like bro no like who who is that working on first off (laughs) there are so many porn stars watching my um or porn bots i should say that are watching my instagram stories and it's all like 
come see me like do this. Oh, and it's and it's it's never ever spelled C O M E. It's always C U M. Always. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, God! Come watch me squirt hot sixty nine. Yeah, like <laughs> you're you're God. you're messaging a fucking post hardcore band that like <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? And then the calls, the call. Uh, granted, yeah. the calls aren't so oh, fucking vulgar, but what? I don't give a shit about extended warranties. I don't give a shit about my social security being compromised. Uh, and then the people who just call and hang up, fuck you. Fuck all of you, okay? Um, yeah, burn in a car accident or something. <laughs> God damn. Um, but you're very, very, so disgusting. You should say it. <laughs> spammers He said are... it, and he is right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope I'm not going to be so out of touch saying or making this reference, but like, right? Zelda, Ganondorf is evil personified, right? Spammers are that in real life. They're right. Ganondorf in real life, without the power, without the fucking whatever. They're just bullshit evil people. <laughs> they suck. Correct. Right. I hope that didn't go over your heads. I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> like I know it, but I don't, I don't, I'm not into it that much. No, no, I, I, I played that stuff. Okay. Um, okay, recent jams. Uh, who have you been listening to lately? And I'm going to take a quick guess, and I'm going to say Pink Shift. Okay. Yes and no. Got it. <laughs> and Oregon in May. It, yes and no. <laughs> okay, all right, never mind. Go, Lou, you go first. Oh, what the hell? I'm going back and forth. Um, Courage Mother. Um, Mud Whale. Mud Whale. Yeah, they are. Um, they fucking go hard. They're so good. Um, pink Shift. <laughs> I want to see how many times I can say Pink Shift in this podcast. Pink Shift. Pink Shift, Pink Shift, Pink Shift. Pink Shift, Pink Shift. Pink Shift, Pink Shift. Pink Shift, Pink Shift. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the Google SEO factor is going to go off the fucking charts right now. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Lexi, uh, who you've been listening yes. to the last few days? Yeah. Uh, Boston Manor, they just released a new song called Carbon Mono. Oh, they did. It's so Chef, good. Chef's Kiss. So fucking good. I, I love that. I love them. I'm going to hold their hands one day. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> them and Save Face. They just released their new song called Glitter. Phenomenal. Their whole disc like discography. I can't fucking say discography. That. Yes, thank you. That <laughs> so good. Their whole the whole thing. So good. Perfect. Um I have been listening so uh I don't know if you know them, but the band Viljarda. Um they released two new singles last week, and that is all I have been fucking listening to. They're like Norwegian freaking black death metal stuff, kind of genty, kind of. I don't know. If you ever see the word fall, T H A L L, that's Phil Jarda. Sick. Fall. <laughs> um, that sounds sick. It's sick. The sick guest, in fact. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, I I woke up with this. What have you woke? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> so fucking sick. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't take it. I love it so much. Um, I woke up with this. In, uh, what have you woken up with in your head for seemingly no reason? What have you been singing when you wake up? Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I know what I saw. What did you see? Moth. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, like a giant moth. All right. I mean, in it, your as... dream? Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, hey yo, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean something that I don't know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But give me a call if you need anything. <laughs> you guys like analyze your dreams? What? Uh, 
I do. You analyze your dreams? I don't think I remember my dreams enough for them to be analyzed. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have like a random memory of a dream like weeks later and I'll be like, oh, I dreamt that. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, that's it. Like, I don't have any <laughs> vivid dreams. Oh, I write my, all mine down. See, that's what I really should do. Because uh, I heard that that helps with... Um, uh, what's the thing where you can kind of make your dreams? What's it called? Um, like lucid, lucid dreaming. dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did, have you had any experience with that? Uh, n no, but I know a lot about it just because I'm a psychology major. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to analyze everything. I love it. Second <laughs> brain dork. Love it. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. That, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we'll go, how about you, Lexi? Uh, damn. Like, just songs in general. Um, I keep waking up with this Trash Boat song. They just put out their like new album, but it's called Don't You Feel Amazing? And I do feel amazing. <laughs> waking up listening to that, I feel amazing. It's great. See, that's what I'm looking for. That sounds good. Um, so uh, there's a, a part in one of the new, new songs on the new album from Protest the Hero, and it goes, um, 45 feet from here to there, it's 45 feet through the air, 45 feet from bliss to despair, only 45 feet through the air, and it's about, um, uh, the a 1920s actress, uh, Peg and Whistle, who I feel like I have this weird connection to. Um, so this song is like extra special to me. But she uh, committed suicide jumping off the H in the Hollywood sign. Um, wow. And that song is about her. Uh, but that particular line has been in my head for fucking weeks. Uh, I wake up and I'm constantly singing that. But it's really fucking good. Um, do you guys have any weird, like, feelings that you're connected to somebody that might not currently be living? Yeah. Um, so, funny story <laughs> is that <laughs> my family, so, um, I'm, like, half Mexican, half white. Rips. <laughs> but um, I guess on my grandma's side, which is, you know, the white side, um, we're related to like the Bush family in some weird way. Like the it. Bush family? I, I think it's the Bush family, like President Bush. But oh, then geez. again, I don't know enough to. 9 11 <laughs> coming for a circle. 9 11. <laughs> enough. Um, you feel connected to him? It, no, like, I'm. That's literally my family. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't want to be connected. No, I. <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking if you oh, feel man. like you have any weird connection that like <laughs> to a random dead person. Oh my god. No, I don't. That's <laughs> No one needs to know that I'm white. No one needs to know. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, so, uh, Peg Inwessel, uh, the, the actress who killed herself, uh, Titanic things? Like, I feel like I was on the Titanic or something. It's fucking weird. That sounds psycho. I'm sorry. But I... <laughs> I feel like I was on the Titanic. And then, um... Uh, like... What am I thinking of? Uh, like, uh swing and like big band stuff um i can't remember i don't know i i don't know i feel connected to some dead fucking trumpet player or something and like that's sick i don't care um but it's weird like anytime i hear these people's names or i see something on the titanic i get like a weird feeling and it's i don't know I get that. Sick. I'm psychotic. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's an illness, love. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. 
Precisely. I mean, it's interesting, but like, nope, I've not felt that feeling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Shinfo, give me some shitty info that doesn't, uh, really, that's my Shinfo, is, uh, <laughs> that's not what I wrote, but I'll use that. Uh, give me some shitty info that isn't really pertinent to anything. I don't know who's up, but one of you go. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, like anything? Like a anything? Oh, I like saw just this TikTok, <laughs> and it was about eels and how they don't sexually reproduce, but they keep oh. there keeps being more of them. Hey, oh. <laughs> okay. Apparently, they like go from like fresh water or sorry, salt water to fresh water. And then find their way to the Bermuda Triangle, and then more come from there. Aliens, That's another bro. conspiracy theory. Aliens. <laughs> the Bermuda Triangle. What yes. is up with that? Yeah, the Bermuda Triangle. We're, <laughs> we're really round in full circle here. This is yeah. awesome. Um, how about you, Lexi? Anything? Uh, just like a random fact, right? Like, yeah, random fact. It doesn't have to be personal. It doesn't have sick. to be anything. Sick. So, um, I have this funny story. Well, not funny, but it's whatever. Um, going back to Hawthorne Heights and stuff like that, I saw them at Warp Tour in like 2017. Um, and then the next year, around the same exact time as the Warp Tour anniversary, um, I flew to Washington for my sister's wedding. And she was getting married in like Olympic in the forest area. It was really cool. Um, on the plane back, I'm like air dropping memes to people on the airplane. And <laughs> I see I see an airdrop name pop up and it's all JT Woodruff, which is a singer of Hawthorne Heights. Yeah. And I was like, Ayo, <laughs> this isn't him. I'm like, this isn't him. It's crazy. I get off the flight and I'm standing there waiting for my uh, brother-in-law and my other sister. And I just see them walk past me. And I'm like... No hey. shit! Yeah, they <laughs> they were on my flight. I think they were coming back from, like, a show in Alaska or something. Something right along Damn. the coast. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's my shitty info. That's cool info. I said... Eel See, song. that's... Yeah, that's not really <laughs> shitty, though. That's that's good. Wait, but the the eel thing, you learn something new every single day, because I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> Useless, but interesting. <laughs> yes. Yes, it, yeah. Um, good shinfo. Um, give someone credit. Who's been killing it for you lately? You know what I'm about to say. You know Pink what I'm about ship. to say. Pink ship. Take it away. <laughs> Pink ship. Like, are we kidding? <laughs> That's it. No, but yeah, they have been killing it. They've been killing it. They have. Damn. Truly. Same for you, Lexi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Pink shift. I, I can't get over how much I love those guys. Um, They're owning yeah you really are um Don't okay so I, <laughs> yeah um so i told myself that i wasn't going to do this when i first started this segment but i'm going to give you guys credit um i i when i say that i i wasn't going to give who i was talking to credit because <laughs> i it, it seems disingenuous to me at least um but I do want to give you guys credit because you're doing really, I uh, mentioned it earlier in the podcast, but you're doing awesome fucking things for really the people who need it most. Um, and not only am I a hundred percent behind that, but like, it's just, it, it's, it's necessary. It's so needed. And, um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm very proud of you guys, uh, for you, the, the amount that you've grown for what you're doing and for what you'll continue to do. So I'm giving you guys credit because you're fucking awesome. So Aww, thank you. Thank you. Man, I'm gonna cry right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's so nice. I, I, yeah. 
yeah, I, it's from my heart. It it means a lot to me because it's what I stand for. Um, and yeah. So, okay. Uh, did you have anything that you wanted to listen to or anything? If you don't, it's okay. Carbon mono. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's a song I should look up? Are they on YouTube? Do you know? Uh, yeah, Boston Manor by Carbon Mono. Or wait, what the fuck? My dyslexia is hurting me right now. Carbon Mono by Boston Manor. That music video is crazy. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, hold on here. <laughs> I'm going to pull this up. Okay. Ah, uh, Liquid Death. Sponsor us, please. Sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, Liquid Death go. is fucking sick. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep it quiet just so we can keep talking over it, but... Um, yeah. yeah, I listened to this the other day. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's different from what they typically... Or what I've listened to, but I love it. Yeah, they left no crumbs. They never missed. <laughs> they ate. <laughs> do you, so, Lou? Because you you like Lincoln Park so much, do you feel this is very Lincoln Parky? For sure. Yeah. You don't have to agree with me if you don't want to. No, I, I agree. Okay. But also, like the British accent, like <laughs> tea and crumpets, love. <laughs> Instrumentally, like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, wait, so where is Boston Manor from? Blackpool, England, UK. This is going to be an idiotic comment, but I just assumed that they were from Boston. <laughs> no, <laughs> but they're, they're touring to Boston <clears throat> uh, with Neck Deep. Ooh. So I kind of want to see Boston Manor in Boston. That would be <laughs> cool. Yeah, bring that around. That would be great. I'm excited. I'm seeing them in November. They're out by you for that, right? Yeah, they're playing at the Glass House in Pomona oh, and Glass the House. Novo in LA. So... I, one of my favorite bands, Finch, is down from Temecula, um, mm -hmm. and they like their home venue is the Glass House, and I always wanted to go there. Um, so you got to let me know how that is. Yeah, I, it's going to be my first time going there, so I'm excited. Yeah, this is such a cool video too. Boston Manor. <laughs> Big time. The lead singer named Henry, right? Yeah. Oh my God, Henry. Will we ever change his haircut? <laughs> no. He has always had that haircut, hasn't he? He has always yes. had that haircut. I'm like, I mean, fine. It fits him. Pretty well. <laughs> also, like, yeah. I mean, I've up. I've met all of them, all of them, and they're really cool dudes. Super nice, super nice and stuff. Like, damn, I miss them. <laughs> No, I miss. Pink shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Mark from Mooseblood, is it, on guitar? No. That's Ash and Mike and Dan. <laughs> they kind of look the same. They're just tall and lanky British guys with freaking yeah. five o'clock shadows and a small little beanie on top of their head that doesn't really warm yeah. their head, yeah. The condom beanie look. Condom beanie, that's right. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, sick. That's such a good song. Pump for more nice. from them. Uh, oh, I gotta get back over here. 
Okay, um, so that's, let's listen. Uh, plugs. Plug the hell away. Hey, yo, um, Lou. <laughs> um, I want to plug a band that is from Texas, Austin, Texas. They're called We Don't Ride Llamas. Um, they are a black alternative band. They are so good. I've also been listening to them a lot. Um, and we had someone go to Austin this weekend. Yeah, this weekend to go shoot them. So I'm excited for that. Sick. Yeah, that was that's cool. I'm excited for that. Me too. Um. Oh, is it my turn? <laughs> I, I thought I thought you were going, going to add more. Keep going. I was like, oh, I was like <laughs> you can do whatever, man. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There you go. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Pig shift! Woo! Pig shift! Hog, hog shift. I think I've only, like, tweeted with them once or twice, so if they watch this, they're going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Ash, Ash be like, makes me, me so shy. Up my <laughs> no, they, they all make me so shy. Like, when we saw them live, uh, Ash, Ash, the singer, um, they, I, I felt like I could not be in their presence. I was not, I was not good enough to look at them. I was like, hey, let me look at Paul. Really it's fast. So just like when they're on stage, it's like, oh, like I'm intimidated, like I shouldn't be here. And they get off stage, they're like four foot, and it's like, oh, they're like, <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> they're so nice though. They're all. So I nice. love them. Yeah. Call. Yeah, pink shift. If you want to come on here and talk to uh, some random guy about music and stuff, let me know. Get Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. Uh yeah. Uh any other plugs you'd like to do? Yeah, I I have some plugs. Um my friends band. Uh, I'm friends with this one band called Sleep Talk and they're from LA. Um they're releasing a new single, I believe, tomorrow actually. Cool. Um I think it's called Ultra Normal, something like that. Um those guys have supported me since 2016 um and i've supported them since then too they were the first band i ever shot that actually gave me a chance at photography and stuff love it so i love them check them out at sleep talk official i think uh, if <laughs> yeah. that is tomorrow tweet that out or tag me in it um and make sure i listen to that tomorrow yeah i got you got please you. um anything else um, if you're a BIPOC LGBTQ creator or band or whatever, hit us up. And if you have like a feature and stuff, we'll, we'll always look at them and check them out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Uh, before we, uh, get off of here, I do want to say Lou, um, you are a phenomenal fucking artist. Um, Thank and you. <laughs> I don't know if you are in the process of uh, a tattoo apprenticeship yet or if you're still looking for one, but I hope that works out so well for you because, um, God, you're fucking talented and uh, that is going to be an awesome line of work for you um, when it happens. Oh, yeah. Someone get Lou an apprenticeship. Please. Yeah. Big Lou time. has designed like a couple of my tattoos so far, but I'm so indecisive, so I'm always like, "Hey, can you change this a little bit?" <laughs> where do you Where do you actually live, Lou? Are you in right Maryland? Now I'm in Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay. That's where I went to school, so I have like an apartment here. Um, but I'm from like Perryville, Maryland, which is like an hour out from Baltimore. Gotcha. So, um, look into it. Uh, I, I don't know if anything will come of it, but it, it might be worth a shot. Uh, I used to apprentice for a guy named Jason Lynn um, at House of Madness Tattoos in Hampstead, Maryland. Um, he was on Ink Master and all that shit, and I don't know if he's looking for an apprentice, but I know that he has a really good eye and a lot of connections, so... Um, Look him up, see if that's something you might be interested in. And if you are, let me know. And I can kind of reach out to him and try and facilitate something for you. So, oh my God. Um, <laughs> for sure. Like, yeah, just hit me up. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, Bob, you're a tattoo artist? or I apprenticed. Okay. Um, I never got past that stage. 
It was <laughs> not... When was I doing that? I was 22, I think, and I was about to get married, and I needed a real job, and I couldn't hang on to an apprenticeship for as long as I was doing it. So, um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say regret not following through with it, because I wouldn't have a lot of the things I have today, um, mainly personally, but... Um, I do kind of wish I stuck with it because I don't know what that side of things would have offered me. But yes, I apprenticed at one point. That's cool. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, I talk to Lou if you need a commission or something like that. Uh, big time, big fucking yes. time. Um, and then uh, obviously punkagandapress.com. Punk A G A. N D A press <laughs> dot com. Not agenda, aganda. Um and uh yeah, go check them out. Uh, if you're I it reminds me of like early two thousand stereo killer dot com. Um and they posted a bunch of album reviews and they were just in touch with the community and it was um MySpace kind of killed them because that's what they kind of we're going for um but uh yeah it, it's you guys are killing it um if you're a band playing a show reach out to them and have somebody come out and photograph your shit um if you're a band releasing new music uh reach out to them to i don't know facilitate any kind of future review or something um, and honestly, you guys are just great people, so it's probably a good connection to have, especially when you inevitably take over the world and um, start using your billions of dollars to fly into space like fucking Jeff Bezos. So um, that's the goal. <laughs> oh my god! You go to Pluto and find our ancestors. To the moon. <laughs> Literally, Pluto. Lou and I have been saying that all week. Punkaganda to the moon. We're going. Going to the <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Punkaganda, go follow them, go uh, talk to them, and go love them. Uh, but I would say that's a good spot to end this podcast. So thank you guys so much for coming on and talking with me um, and dealing with my uh, me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I, <laughs> I love to. I love you guys to death. And uh, again, you guys are doing very important stuff. So keep it up. Um, cool. But that's been another episode of this Hornbill podcast. No, not this horn. The Hornbill podcast. Um, to differentiate from the other Hornbill podcasts. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for nothing! Bitch!